Hey guys! So, Happy New Year! This is going to be my first video of 2014. So, I figured I would do my everyday look, what I've been doing lately, and it's just pretty simple and it's great for any skin tone or any eye color. And I figured I'd make it like a chit chat video, like Get Ready With Me, because I've always done Get Ready With Me videos where it's like, I fast forward and put music or something. So I figured this time I might talk through it with you guys. I don't know, I might decide later to put music over it. We'll see. So, I have already moisturized and primed my face. I used the Carez Wild Rose Serum and 24 Hour Moisturizer. And then I primed a Smashbox Hydrating Primer. So... I am going to be using the Bare Minerals, the original formula foundation in the color medium beige. I don't know why I've never used this in a Get Ready With Me video because I've loved this foundation for years. I've used it and then tried something new and always end up going back to it. So I'm going to be using this with the Sephora brush. It is the mineral powder. It's brush number 45. So it's just like this. So that's what I'm going to be doing with this. And yeah. I'm going to dump a little bit into the cap. bathroom. It's a really weird setup, so I'm not sure how well it's going to come out. I'm going to buff it all over my face. And Bare Minerals, for me at least, has a very light coverage, so I'll go over my face quite a few times. This brush is wet. I don't know how it got wet. I like this foundation though. I really, really, really like this. Like I said, I've switched many times and always, for some reason, come back to it. I'm getting really low. Which is really sad. I'm getting low. But when I use the Bare Minerals, I like to use the Smashbox Hydrating Primer with it because the Bare Minerals can be very drying, especially whereas I have dry skin to begin with. But if you don't have dry skin, it can still be drying and it kind of tends to settle into dry spots. So that's not very fun. But the primer really seems to help it so it doesn't dry me out so bad. I'm like out of this foundation, that's funny. I didn't realize I was that low, I'm going to just pick some up. But it does take a little bit of time. A lot of people, people that come in to like work and tell me that they don't like bare minerals. And the reason is that they just, feel like it doesn't give them coverage. And I explain that you have to, you know, it's a little more tedious than using a liquid. You have to go around a few times to get the coverage that you need or would like. But for some people, one coat is enough. But for me, it's really not. I'm one of those weird people that like my foundation to be a little bit darker than my face too. Which is, I mean, any makeup artist can tell you that's wrong, but... I like it. It might not be right, and it might not be right for everyone, but I like to look a little tanner than I am, just because I'm very pale. Now I feel like I do a good job blending it so it doesn't look very funny. Especially with a powder, you can get away with going a little darker, just because it's easier to blend. I'm really sad that I'm almost out of this foundation, though. I'm going to have to get some tomorrow when I go into work. I just blend it all the way down. I prefer the original foundation, I mean the original formula of this, right over the mat. Because the original has a little bit of a dewy glow to it. And you don't normally get that with a, um, with a powder foundation. But the matte one is great for people with oilier skin. Where I'm more on the dry side. Most of the time at least. In the summer I get oily sometimes, but not usually too bad. It's going to be a really long video. I'm not getting very much foundation out every time I shake it. <laughs> Just some blemishes I'm trying to cover if you can see. It's weird for me to have breakouts. I don't think I've ever filmed a video where I had a breakout because it's I rarely ever break out. My skin has just been so dry that I've been trying so many new products lately and piling on the moisturizer and it's been clogging my pores which has been horrible. But I finally found what I've been using for a couple days now that I've really been like, it's been the Corez. Which is funny because in other videos when I've talked about the Corez lip butter, I've called it Corez. 
but apparently I've been saying it wrong my whole life, so it's called Cora's. And it's the Wild Rose. I used the exfoliator and the sleeping facial, which is amazing. It's just like a mat, like a I wouldn't say a mask because it's not thick or anything. It's like a lotion you put on before you go to bed, but it's heavier than night cream and more hydrating. And then there's the serum, which I love their products because they're so like natural and um, they're okay for sensitive skin that you can put them everywhere, even on your eyelids. And I never realized how dry my eyelids were until I started using that. And so I use the serum and the 24-hour moisturizer, and they've been amazing. My skin just soaks it up. I was using the Shiseido Benefiance, and I thought I liked it until I realized every time I was showering, it was coming, like my skin just was dry after showering. It only, the moisturizer only worked when it was on, which is not the point of a moisturizer. So, there's that. Alright, so what I'm going to be using today is a new palette I got from work from Gratis. It's the Smashbox, it's so messy, Full Exposure Palette. That's what it looks like. It's pretty. And it has some really nice neutrals. And I've never done anything, any get ready of them videos with neutrals other than the naked palette, I believe. So these are the colors that are in there. I'm mostly going to use the browns and the taupes just because, you know, that's just what I do. So first I'm going to prime my eyelids with the e.l.f. Eyelid Primer. I've tried high-end ones. I've tried really expensive ones, whichever. And I like this one the best. And it's the cheapest out of all of them. I really think it does what it needs to do. And I don't feel the need to spend money on a high-end primer when it goes under my makeup anyway. You're not going to see it, you know. So I just kind of dab it on and blend it out with my finger. It doesn't need to be perfect because it's just primer. The lighting in here isn't so great. It's hard to see in this uh, viewfinder here. So next I'm going to use the brush that came with just to see if I can get the full effect. So it comes with, it doesn't really have a number or anything, but I guess it's just a Smashbox, a dual-ended brush, fluffy on one side, it's a little dirty. And then this side's kind of cool, it's a flat, it's black on one side, it's white on the other, it's kind of cool to me. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to just use the creamy, creamier one here, all over the lid. I don't really know what I'm doing, I didn't plan this before I did it, I just started doing it, so we're going to see. I'm using the smaller end of the brush too, just kind of get that all over from a little bit up to the brow. Just to kind of give it like a base coat. I only use this palette like one other time. I got so many compliments on it at work. So, I'm going to try something different though, some different colors in the palette. I like to pack it on high near the brow. So give it a little highlight. I'll obviously go back in after. I don't know why I bother doing this part first. <clears throat> Alright, next I'm gonna take the yeah, this shade, which is the more the more golden brown out of all of them. It looks darker, but this is actually I don't know coming out gray. It's actually like a more brown. This is more of a goldeny brown. It has a little bit more auburn, I'd say to it. I'm gonna use the fluffy end. Gosh, it's gonna be hard. Alright, so I'm just gonna kinda dab it all on. I really have been loving the mattes lately, and before, I like when I first started my channel, I remember saying how much I hated mattes. Like, I just love shimmers like crazy. And it's nice to pair mattes and shimmers together. For the most part, I just like the um, mattes lately. Oh, I'm not even telling you what I'm doing. I'm putting it in the corner and dragging it up lightly into the crease and just blending it as I go. I like my brown to be very, very dark here, like more dark than most people probably like. I just like it that way for the added effect. I'm just going to blend as I go. I'm not trying to make it too heavy on the crease. It doesn't even be perfect because you're always going to go back in and touch it up after. That's why I always tell people, doing the crease, it can be messy sometimes depending on your lid or brush you're using. And I just go with the flow, let it go however it goes, and you can fix it later. So I'll go on to the next one. And the same thing. Of course I make a mess, but it's okay. I'm a little far over on that one. I can fix it after though. I'm trying to use the mirror and also make sure I'm in in camera sight so you guys can see what I'm doing. The mirror is like right here. So it's hard not to look straight into it and be out of the way. So I've been trying to think of new video ideas lately. So if you guys have like questions you want to ask, I can do a Q&A video. Or you can always put, you know, ideas down below, whatever you think. I've just been trying to come up with new ones. I don't film very often, 
And it's either because my lighting is horrible or I just don't know what to do. So if you guys have any ideas or anything you want to see, let me know and I'd be like, really glad to do it. I'm always looking for new ideas. I don't want to do what everyone else is doing, you know? So if you guys have any ideas or anything you'd like to see, let me know. I don't want to do a what I got for Christmas video just because I feel like that's kind of throwing in people's face like oh this is what I got or that's my opinion I mean I've seen some that are really fun to watch but that's just my opinion I don't want to brag kind of it's the only thing I haven't done that I think someone I believe a couple of you have asked me to do it so it's somewhat even I'm just going to darken up this one here it normally does not take me this long to my eyes I swear guys it's just that I'm trying to I'll make sure you guys can see them do it at the same time. Alright, so now I'm going to take the same color that I used before just to go back in and touch up the lid. I really like to do really light in all over the lid and then darken the corner just for the effect, you know, the contrast between the two. On the brow. And then I'm going to take this lighter brown color here just to blend the dark brown up at the top. I'm just going to go to the very, very top of the brown that I already have. Just so that it's not so harsh. If you want to leave it harsh, that's fine too. I just like to blend it. I'm gonna go back give us some that dark brown just to touch up here. I feel like this one looks a lot lighter. Alright, then I'm gonna fix the brow again. I don't know why I did that before. Just to highlight it. Because usually all this dark brown can make your eyes look dark, so you just wanna make sure you highlight and you can go all the way down into the tear duct a little bit. Like only like right above it kind of, you know. Okay, I'm gonna blend it all out. I don't know why that side's looking darker. I think it might be the lighting, I'm thinking. That stuff... No, this one looks darker here. I don't even know. This is the finished look before, you know, eyeliner, mascara, all that. So I think it's pretty... It's kind of like a good everyday look. It's not too, too dark, I feel like. The lighting here looks horrible. It looks like it punched in the eye, but... It's really not that dark, I promise. Normally, I actually go darker. Normally, I will take... I don't even have it with me. Um, Mac Brun and put that over it just because that's a deeper brown. But so that's it for that palette, at least. Oh, I didn't even put the brush back. So the next thing I'm going to do is eyeliner. I'm going to use the L'Oreal Paris Infallible 16 Hour Never Fail Eyeliner. It's still my favorite, even after getting a job at Sephora and trying new things. This seems to be my favorite because it's really, really dark and it's almost like liquid, but not quite. I actually love the, what's the other one, the Milani Liquify. That's another really, really good one that looks kind of like liquid when it's not. So I'm going to try to do this so you guys can see. I'm just doing the waterline. I'm going to do the top waterline as well. You could stop here if you wanted to, but I like to line the top very thinly. I don't like to go very dark with a pencil. It's not as easy with a pencil like this where it's kind of rounded to do such a perfect line. So I like to go very, very close to lashes. And this is, I'm going to, this side you might not be able to see, but I'll try to do this one this way. Let's see. I know it's bad to pull on the eyelid, but I always do. So I'm just going right above the lash line.
And I'm gonna connect it to the bottom just to kind of make it come out a little bit of a point. Yeah, the light in here is absolutely horrible. So I'm going to go on to the next one now. I'm going to do it to the end, to the bottom, just like the other one. that one. They look pretty similar, I think. Mm. Great. Now, this is just the order I do my makeup in. You guys might be different. Like, I would do my blush like the one of the very last things. I do my eyebrows before my mascara. I don't know. So, what I'm using is the Must Have Angled Liner from Sephora. It's brush number 90. That's what it looks like. I like it because it's thin, but it's not very fluffy. I don't like the fluffy kind that make a mess. This is perfect. I'm going to use Color Naked and Color Buck, but mostly the Color Naked. Sometimes when I, f I feel like when I do like a harsh eye or like dark colors like this, I need to use a darker um, eyebrow. I don't know why, but I just do. So I, this is just how I do it, guys. So I just start right here, right where it starts to get thicker, and then bring it towards the thinner way. And right now I'm using Naked. Oh, these are Urban Decay from the Naked One palette, by the way, but they do come singly. Single shadows. I'm just going to follow the natural line. I don't do much to make it different in order to give an arch or anything just because I pretty much can't. I have um, very rounded brows just naturally. Now I'm going to take the color buck and just do one coat over the end just because it's so thin there. I like to darken it up in the very end. hope you guys can see what I'm doing. Then go back with the naked and continue. Just following the natural shape. I wish I had a really nice arch. I don't have much to work with. But I feel like they look good and they're fairly natural looking. You can see the difference. My eyebrows naturally are very light. So it just gives it a little bit of something, you know, it's not like super unnatural. Sometimes I like pencils, but lately I've been into the powders. So again, okay, doing the same thing, just following it. Let's see if I can try to do it in the viewfinder. So you guys can really see what I'm doing. It's hard to see though where it is. This one's a little bit more hard because the end of it is a little bit lighter, I feel like. It's a little more sparse at the end as well. Even in this part, it's a little more sparse too, which is a little frustrating. I wish my eyebrows were even. It takes a little bit more with this one just because it's like I said sparser at the end so it takes a little more time and more product. So I think that's it for the, my eyebrows. And I'm actually going to go back in with my Sigma Taper Blending Brush, the E40. 
This is brand new. I actually haven't even used this yet, but if you guys see, it's kind of like frayed. I don't know if that's normal. But I'm actually noticing that I need to apply a little more brown. So I'm going to take the Smashbox palette one more time and just apply a little more brown. Like I said, this isn't normally a step, but I'm feeling like I need to darken it up a little bit because it goes from really dark to not much, so I didn't blend it very well. Well, it's like a little dark. Like I said, this has been my everyday look, but this might be too much for everyone for an everyday look, you know? Where you could just do a little lighter on the brown. Plus, I do work at Sephora, so <laughs> going dark is, you know, it's never, never too dark. Never too much color, never too much glitter, never too bright, never too bold. <laughs> really nice I think I like this brush I haven't even used it before and I really like it but like I said it's really frayed I don't know if that's normal I mean it might be let me know if you guys have this brush it's the, the E40 like I said taper blending which I don't know why they call it tapered because it's not tapered if it was tapered it'd be thinner it would be so fluffy but I would call this a fluffy blending but that's just me right now I'm going to do my favorite combination of mascaras or lately at least I'm going to do the L'Oreal voluminous which is this one, plain old carbon black. And I'm gonna pair it with the Benefit They're Real. Normally I don't, okay, I go back and forth. I love this mascara and then I hate it. It's very lengthening, but it's also a little bit drying and it's not very volumizing. So this is very vol vol volumizing, plus a little bit lengthening, so I like to do this one first. It's very black too, which I love it. And then I do the other one next. I start at the lash line and just wiggle it all the way up. And you could even just do this mascara alone. I love this mascara. I've kind of been obsessed with it for like a long time. And even like I said, a lot of things you see pay more doesn't always make them more. Certain things I would say are skincare for sure is sometimes lipsticks are eyeshadows absolutely are better than like high end or better than drugstore in my opinion. Foundations sometimes back and forth, but mascaras I find the best drugstore. I don't know why. I just I mean I like some high end ones like Dior and stuff like that, but like. My favorite ones are drugstore. And, um, where was I going with that? Oh, eyeliner too. I'm all, I think they're comparable. I don't think one is better than the other. Actually, you're just going to spend a little bit more for a high-end one. Sometimes this mascara tends to clump. So then I like to go in with the other one before the L'Oreal one dries. I go in with this one. This is a trial size one. I have a few of these, actually. I don't know why, but they all seem to be the small sizes. The same thing. It's just gonna make them extra long. The L'Oreal one is a brand new bottle. Like I've only used it like twice, so it's a little wet. And I don't really like wet mascaras because they tend to clump. I'm just trying to separate them with this one. Not sure I like how it's coming out. Just trying to separate them a little better. Okay, now onto the other one. Yeah, this is really wet. I don't like this at all. I have like three tubes of this L'Oreal Voluminous like floating around and this is the brand new one I just opened like a week ago. I like it better when it dries out a little bit. I've been dying to try the L'Oreal Voluminous Butterfly one. You know, I'm gonna go in and fix this one because they're just way too spread apart and weird looking. I 
why it's doing that. Maybe it would have been better just to do this one alone rather than pair it with another. Too late. I don't like how those are looking at all. These little ones right here are looking funny to me. Whatever. And then I'm going to take the L'Oreal Voluminous one and just apply a little, little bit. See how wet that is? It's like clumping over the brush. I don't like that at all. That's like gross to me. I'm going to wipe that off. And then apply a little bit of this, just the bottom lashes, just because it kind of makes your eyes look a little more open. And I go very light with this because it's easy to make a mess. Like I said, it's easy to make a mess. <laughs> yeah, I'm really, really not liking this mascara today. It's just way too wet. It's almost like moosey too, it's weird. That's good enough. And so don't oh here it is. So I'm gonna use my NARS Deep Throat Blush, which is like my favorite blush in the whole world, with the um, Sigma powder slash blush brush and it's the F10 brush. So it looks like it's really soft and nice. I hit pan, it's kinda sad. This has lasted me a long time though. I'm just going to kind of blend it up. It's a really nice blush. It's perfect for like any skin tone. And it's very natural. I mean, you can obviously make it dark, obviously, with anything you can, but it's just very natural looking if you just do a clean sweep of it, you know. Okay. Because I went neutral on the eyes. I'm going to go a little bit brighter, sorry. Look at my lipstick. A little brighter on the lips. I'm going to do Buxom lipstick and Exhibitionist. My hands are covered in mascara. Sorry about that. That's what it looks like. It has pretty packaging. And my favorite thing about it, or one of my favorite things, it actually says Buxom on the lipstick. This is the creamiest lipstick ever. It's so bright and pretty. My lips are really dry lately, so being so creamy is nice. I actually haven't used this one before. It's a brand new one, so... A lot of people say that bright pinks are for spring and summer, but I wear them all year round. Just because it's fun. So there is that. That is the finished look. This is fun everyday look. I mean, you could tone it down by doing a good nude lip and um, blending out the eyes a little more. <laughs> Sorry, a little bit more if you wanted to tone it down. But this is what I've been wearing every day, and I love it. And I think it's great for any eye color, any skin color. I'm just gonna kind of get close to you guys and see the finished look. I think it looks good. So, post your comments down below. Let me know what you guys think, and I will see you in my next video.